Ira, is this the case of them just running out of bonds to buy? <laughs> well, that's part of it, but not really. I mean, the, the Japanese deficit is still quite high, so there's still going to be plenty of supply out there. Um, but I, I think it's just an acknowledgement that, hey, maybe QE isn't working the way that, uh, that we had thought or, or that there's diminishing returns by just buying more bonds. Binky, break-even's picking up, people positioning for, for more inflation, Treasury yields, nominal yields grinding higher as well. When does that become an equity story of it all? Uh, so I would say, you know, two things. Our house view in terms of, you know, what our economists think is that inflation is going to move up. It's going to move up very gradually. And that's going to allow, you know, the, the, the central banks to maintain what I would call the snail's pace of rate normalization. Um, I would argue the risks on inflation are firmly to the upside, whether you're thinking about the lagged impact that growth has on inflation, whether you're thinking about the dollar and oil prices, whether you're thinking about the tightness in the labor market, whether you're thinking about the incredible run of idiosyncratic sort of micro events that have depressed inflation. Um, so I think the risks on inflation are firmly to the upside. I would argue gradual increases in rates are, you know, an equity story, but they're positive for equities. A very disorderly yeah. rise in rates uh, with a panicked Fed because inflation moves up suddenly is a, a, a bit of trouble. But I would argue, you know, still relatively modest trouble given where we are sort of starting from. Do you share that view, Jonathan? I, I do. And I think that if you look at the 10-year uh, Treasury, we just did a research report over Credit Suisse that up till about three and a half on a 10-year Treasury, it's a, still a positive for stocks. And as really? you. Yeah, and, and the reason is, is because it's a sign of a return to normality um, and a return to economic health. And the, and the key here is when we're talking about interest rates is not what some central banker is doing. It's the fact that the global economy is better and it's forcing th this up. If this is all about central bankers, the market would be ignoring it, but it's not. And, and that's, I think, the real story.